All right, you all, this is for all of you techies that are trying to make a decision of are you going to purchase a Canon mirrorless camera or a Sony mirrorless camera or a Canon or a Sony. Now, I used to shoot with a Nikon when I was doing a lot of photography. And then I started using my DSLR for photography and video. And that's the main reason I chose Canon over Nikon. Now, I'm looking at the difference between the Sony and the Canon from a DSLR mirrorless standpoint. Let me tell you what I've discovered. The difference is preference. If you like a, a Mac, then you're gonna probably stick with a Mac over a PC. It's hard to just switch lanes. If you like PCs, and then all of a sudden you decide between a PC and a Mac, you're gonna be familiar with the PC feel and the Mac is not gonna fit well for you. And there's pluses and minus in all of this, but it's really about preference. Today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about cameras and mirrorless cameras and tell you exactly what I have discovered. So, shout out to uh, MacBook. They came out with a new, it, I, they call it the M1 chip. And so if you're a techie person and you know, I got another MacBook Pro and I got this one because it has the M1 chip. We'll talk about that later, but what it's basically saying is Apple is now um, the author of their own processing chip. And so with that being said, shout out to Apple stepping out with that M1 chip. Now, I was wrestling about getting a Canon or a Sony mirrorless. And I was thinking about it from a video perspective. Now, again, for those of you who are just into techie stuff and buying stuff, uh, maybe you've got you a Ronin, a Ronin gimbal. It's real big. We won't even go into that. But um, I call it the, 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 the 100 pound cobra snake. Like, if, if, you're gonna use a, if you're gonna use a gimbal, I don't know how you could shoot with a gimbal for more than five minutes before you know you feel like you've been working out. And the problem with the Canon, I was shooting a 5D Mark III, it's heavy. And when you put a lens on it, it's heavier. So when you're carrying Canon, um, 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 cam Canons, particularly a Canon camera, and you're using L lenses, you know everybody calls, right, when I'm always doing something live. They always start to call you know, nine o'clock, 10, it don't matter. Um, but with that being, let me turn this off because you know what that means. That means I'm just gonna call you back. <laughs> I'm gonna call you back. Okay, um, for those of you, if you've ever carried a Canon, a Canon is a very heavy camera, particularly the 5D Mark III. And when you put these L lenses on it, by the time you finish just shooting photography, um, you're gonna probably feel like you've been in a workout. Now, it was interesting because someone showed me a Sony mirrorless camera. This is the first time I saw a Sony mirrorless camera, and I don't even know the brands really, but I bought one, and this is like an A7 something, you know, but again, it's like a PC. It's weird because when you're spending thousands of dollars, if, when I'm carrying something heavy, it feels like I'm getting my money's worth. When I picked up this little Sony, it felt like one of those little cameras that you get for like a hundred dollars or something and you are spending thousands of dollars and maybe it's powerful, but it just doesn't feel like your money's worth. It's a psychological thing. And then it also has this really weird thing about it. Like um, I came across this incredible kind of strap to carry your camera and this has a clip on thing and um, I don't know the brand, but it, I thought it was real cool. But when you're starting to shoot video, check this out. You hear that? You hear all that noise? It's like one of those clicker clackers or one of those, like, you know, in New Year's where you're doing like this. Like, I don't know why they came up with that design where they've got these hanging metal things. And so you're gonna hear that on your, see, you're capturing that on your video. You're getting, that's your, that's your sound if you're, if you're moving. I don't like that. But at the same time, um, I was in a dilemma between do I keep a Sony and buy expensive lenses? If you know anything about cameras, the money is in the glass, the money's in the lenses, and everybody should have a 70 to 200. This thing weighs like a, a not a brick, a center block, you know? And it's, you know, very expensive, but a lot of glass. Once you put that on top of a Canon, like I said, it's very heavy. Now you come up with a light Sony but you wanna use your glass, so you buy one of these 
Metabones adapters that you put on the front of your Sony, which allows you to use your Canon glass. And now you've got a light Sony with a heavy lens. So if you're going for weight and you want to save on your, 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 your money because you don't want to go buy thousands of dollars worth of new lenses and you buy an adapter, now you got a heavy lens on a light body. It's kind of weird. That being said, this is video is being shot on a, a 5D Mark III, and I just purchased, I made a decision. I was going to buy a mirrorless camera, a light, so we could do some more video, and this is even better to be on a gimbal. Like, if you're holding this Sony on a gimbal, you could probably carry it for 10 or 15 minutes as opposed to three minutes, okay? Um, but we're gonna unbox this Canon R. This Canon R is a monster. Now, I don't know if you're into going into the store and dropping like seven grand. Like, I don't know if that's what you do, but I do. And, you know. So let me show you all the stuff I've, I've got. Um, I've, I've got this, I went to Mike's camera. I'm not, I'm not like a vendor or an advertiser, but when you got seven grand coming to your house, you kind of want to walk it out the store. You don't want the, 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 um, Amazon folks dropping that on your front porch. You know, you get a little nervous or about that. So let's see what's in, let, let's see what's in the bag. Uh, of course my, I buy a lot of stuff from Rob um, at Mike's camera. Um, inside, here's the, this is the Canon. <clears throat> this is, this here, we're gonna unbox this. This is the Canon R. I'm gonna show you something that I learned early on, what I like about the 5D Mark III and the Canon R. Same battery charger, same battery charger, but when you go into this box, it's a different battery for the Canon R. Same size, but I understand this battery has, is a little bit more potent. And so this is the only thing I've taken out of this box to charge it up. Um, I was going to shoot some video and I always wanted to plug in my camera and I wanted to plug it in so that I can shoot with that camera um, without the battery. And yes, Canon has, uh, just like Sony, an adapter that you can plug into your camera and then plug it into the wall. They didn't have any adapters at, at um, Mike, so I bought this, I guess it's called Tough Tested 33 watt high speed wall charger or whatever. It's, it reminds you of a drill bit or something, something heavy. but. You can plug this in, plug your wires into this, and then plug it into the wall. So I bought that. Um, understand that they've got a new high-speed um, memory chip. This is 64 gigs, but it's high-speed. I, I understand that this thing shoots in like 10 or 15 or 30 or 1,000 K. I don't know. So let's see what's inside. Let's unbox this puppy. Let's, un let's unbox it. Now, Here's what I learned. You're gonna to have to get some new lenses to go with this new camera, although you can also use your new camera with your old lenses if you buy this adapter. This is the adapter. Like it changes, it allows you to use your Canon lenses on a Canon camera. There's your adapter. So we've got that to attach to this, which is probably a little lighter, so you can put your heavy lenses on it. So, nice little handy case, just like your, your uh, flashes, et cetera. Is the chicken in there? Okay, um, so just like your, like your little, your, your flashes. So, the adapter, the charger, I opened it up, there's the battery, there's your kind of cord, wiggly kind of cord stuff. Um, there's the adapter, so I, I don't think I'm gonna have to use this adapter because I've got this adapter, but anybody who does video, you can't have enough batteries. That's another thing I didn't really like about Sony. The ba it's, it's light, but if I had a battery to show you, it was small and it would run through batteries, op, bop, 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 bop. Like, 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 it seemed like if I was shooting video with a, with a Sony camera, and then I would put in the battery, like here's the battery. This is the size battery right here. 
This is the size battery from a Sony. This is the size battery from a Canon. But this again is the mirrorless. This is the, so you can tell that you've got two or three times the, the battery life. And so if you're gonna be shooting with Sony, buy a whole bunch of extra batteries if you're doing some professional on site or you got a client you're shooting, you're shooting. I think that the battery held up well for photos. Like you can do a lot of time on this battery with photos, but video, yeah, that battery was going all the time. All right, so I'm gonna set that there, set this here. What else is in there? Do you all do this? Like, do you fill out your warranty stuff and send it in and mail it in? Tell the truth, you don't. You know you don't. No, you don't. And it's just like, and did you buy the warranty at the, at, did you buy the warranty? Like every time you buy something, you got something, they're like, do you want that to last for two years for another $39? Or you can get a warranty for like $500 and I'm saying, if I drop it, shouldn't my homeowner's insurance take care of this? I don't know. It's kind of like when you buy rental insurance when you're renting a car, but then you realize that your insurance you have for your car also transfers over to when you're driving a rental car. I don't know. Uh, fancy, this is a fancy something, image.canon. I don't know what image.canon is. Looks like you can adapt your phone and all, I don't know. How abusive is this? Do you all look at these things? It's wrapped up, it's wrapped up. When's the last time you used the yellow pages or a phone book? Like, I know Canon is smart, but why are you killing trees sending all of this? I, I would imagine these are directions. How many of you are getting the way to use your equipment via YouTube? Yeah, you are. I don't even know if you're gonna open this. All right, boom. Um, let's just, we're unboxing this. Okay, here's what I did. Let me tell you what I've done. Um, I understand that even though the old lenses work on the new camera, this somehow makes, it, makes those lenses talk to your new camera. And I understand with this mirrorless setup, um, your actual uh, lens is closer to your sensor. It's like, it's closer. So I don't, I don't know the technology about this, but I bought a box kit where there's a new lens inside of it. So ultimately you're gonna be updating your lenses because Canon's gonna stop making these. I mean, it's kind of like if you've got a computer that's got like, it's running with an old operating system. Once they boost it up, yeah, you can still use it, but it ain't gonna work with the new stuff. So all you can, oh, there's a new strap. All of you Canon user, there's the little flin, the flin, whatever it is that you put on the end of your lens. All of that being said, I bought a kit. And here's the camera. There it is. Like you gotta hold it like a baby or something. You gotta hold it. It's like, this, this is like, it's, it's sealed. So I guess if you pop it open and open it, you, you, they'll know. Now, here we go. There it is, the Canon EOS R5. Now, this is interesting because I thought, you know, I was talking to my salesperson and he said, oh, we just have, this is brand new, we just got it in, there, nobody has it, it's hard to get, it's all those different things. And when I got it home, it said R5, and then I saw that there was an R6, and I was like, the R6 has been out for like two years. I'm like, how did they sell me something new when the R6 has been like, two years old or three years old, mirrorless, and then here's an R5. I'm like, Rob, what's going on? He's like, yo, settle down, settle down, settle down. The way Canon does it, the lower the number, the newer it is. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, that's a great thing. That's a great thing about photography. Like it's all backwards. The, the lower the number, the, the newer the camera. Like did they start with like EOS 18,000 and now we're in 2020 and they're like, we're down to five. What are they gonna do when they get like down to one? Like they're gonna go back to 999? I don't know. It's kind of like when you, you know, you're doing your aperture and all that stuff, the, the, it's backwards. The bigger than, you think it's bigger than nothing. It's like bigger is backwards, but we're not gonna talk about aperture right now. But here's the lens. Let me tell you what I purchased in terms of lenses. And um, here's my Nifty 50. My Nifty 50, is heavier than this entire camera. Look, this is a nifty 50, 50 millimeter Canon L series lens. This lens is heavier than this camera by two or three times. 
So again, if you're going for weight because you want to use a gimbal or something, you don't want all that weight, and then you put that on, this has already made your new little lightweight camera weigh a thousand pounds. I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing, but hey, that's all that's in the box. So let's see. Another reason, okay, let me tell you, I've chosen my Canon over Sony. I didn't understand the Sony operating system. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it's the difference between a PC and a, and a, and a Mac. If you give me a Mac, I can pop in and get going like right now. If you give me a PC, I'm like, control, click, what, where, like what, right, will, I don't know what to do on a PC. I didn't know what to do with this Sony. I was trying to do video and I just want to open up the shutter speed and make some adjustments and there's something that says, is you can't do that. You know, you gotta, you gotta go in these, you can't do it, like can't do it. I'm like, why can't I just adjust and ad can't do it in movie mode? I couldn't figure it out. Not to say it doesn't do a great job once you do figure it out, but you're gonna have to f find a PC user or a Sony user to help you figure out something, particularly if you've been shooting with Canon for the past decade or more. So what lens did I get in the box? Let's see. It's not heavy. This isn't, not, this isn't as heavy as this, but this isn't an L series lens. I think this is an F.8. I got a 24 to 105. This is a 24 to 105. It's not that heavy, but it's probably comparable to any other 24 to whatever I've gotten. So here's what I, be here's what I believe. I should be able to work this particular Canon based on historical memory. Lens cap. Oh, here's something sweet. When you open up, oh, let me show you guys something. When you open up your Sony, and I don't know if this is with the new because Sony has a new camera. It's like alpha something. It's, it's a monster. It looks beautiful. Um, when you open it up this, you see that, do you see the sensor? That's the sensor right there. Like you're looking at, it's like you're looking at the naked eye when you take off your lens on, on this. Now, um, let me show you something that I, that, that I thought was interesting. Just looking, you can't see the sensor. It's like Canon put some sunglasses on their sensor. Like, you, 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 you don't have to worry about the dust and all that. And yes, I did buy the little dust thing. Like, they, you're always buying stuff when you go in the store. And do you need your little dust thing? Like, I don't never use a dust thing, but give me the dust thing. All right, so I know, Bob, take that off. Lens cap, take that off. I should be able to line up the dots pretty uh oh, let's see. Let's see if I can get this done. Um, let's, let's, let's see. There's a red dot. There's a red dot. Boom. Red dot, red dot. I'm pretty familiar with that. The reason I went in the box before was because I needed to charge up a battery because I noticed that this camera comes with a battery that's not charged. And um, it's not like, like my, Mac, my MacBook Pro, it came, I just popped it up. It was fully charged or halfway charged. It's like they know I want to use it immediately. They know I'm the type that's not going to read the directions. And since I'm a Mac person, I don't have to read the directions now. But they want my finger. Like I had to give them my fingerprint to open up my MacBook. Like what's your fingerprint? All right. I'm on. Uh, of course, I'm going to have to pop in a card. Now, again, this is a new card. I don't want to bite into it and figure it out. Um, but if you're like a real like techie person you're, or geeky person, you're probably walking around with a pocket full of what? SD cards. <laughs> That's you. You're walking around. Well, if I put in this SD card, I might have to reformat. I wonder if I, if I would have to reformat this on a Mac. I mean on a Canon. Did I say Mac? I wonder if I'd have to reformat. Like if I can get a picture in here and it just accepts it. Um, let's see. I'm just, I'm on. This is something I'm not familiar with because my 5D is not like this. It doesn't have this little witty thing. But I, what I like about these, though, is like if you're doing something on yourself and you want to have a screen to see what you're doing, you can put that screen on and you're watching your monitor while you're framing your shot from the other side. That's pretty cool. So I think I'm going to like that. I understand that you can just touch this thing. I don't know all about that, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to see if I could put this thing on automatic and just and get a shot. Man, it feels good. It felt like, did you hear that? 
man, I can just tell you looking inside of this camera and I'm going to show you all this in a moment. This camera is bright inside of it. These lights are bright. It, it kind of makes you feel real good about dropping like 7k. <laughs> That's like makes you feel good about coming out the store like 7k lighter. And I'm not saying all of this costs all that, but all this other stuff, when you start adding up to it, it don't take long. So uh, with that being said, I think we're going to like this. And they say that it's got like this, 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 the Sony, the Sony Alpha. Now, did you hear that again? Listen, I was just showing you the Sony. And then all of a sudden you hear that. <laughs> that that's, that's not cool. <laughs> like, that's not cool, you know. Um, but that Sony Alpha, I have a friend who has one. And when he was doing some live streaming for me, that picture was phenomenal. That's why I was about to go buy a Sony Alpha. And then I came across this, this Canon R5. And they said that this smokes this. Like this is head and shoulders upon this. So I'm excited. We just unboxed it. I'll let you know what to do. But again, I think it's the difference between a Mac and a PC. I went with the Canon with the, the, the actual um, 24 to 105 box kit that fits with the new camera. And I know I'll be buying a new 70 to, you know, 200 soon. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Th this is heavy. It's going to make it heavier. But when we're shooting with this gimbal, we're using a gimbal, <laughs> using a gimbal, maybe it's going to be a little lighter. But I can already see right now this is going to be heavy for me to work on a gimbal. This Sony, like me, I don't know if the Alpha is, is this heavy or this heavy, but this is already very heavy. And I can see that five minutes of gimbal work, you're going to be like this. <laughs> you're going to be like this. <laughs> I don't know. I think those videos, you folks that are making videos with that Ronin gimbal and you're doing all this and you're walking around like that, I think that's fake. I mean, I think you're running and you're getting a quick shot and then you're taking a break. And for those of you who are talking about, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this gimbal work, no, I don't believe it. You're going to put this on a tripod and you're going to hold it steady and you're going to let it do the work, but I'm pr I think I'm pretty happy. We just unboxed it. I'll let you know in the future how it works. With that said, save up. But let save up. But last thing, this don't spending lots of money on equipment doesn't make you a great photographer. Like I know some folks that will smoke you with one of them little box cameras that you got to go and get it developed, or you can put it in the sun and. Just because you spend money on equipment, that does not make you a good artist. What makes you a good artist is the craft and the time you put into learning it and then able to maximize what it does. But this is again like having a, 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 a Maserati or something that can go a thousand, a thousand miles an hour. This seems like it can go a thousand miles an hour, but you, you got a speed limit of 30 miles an hour. <laughs> so yeah, you can go a thousand, but law only says you can go 30. So that being said, Canon, Sony, I went with the Canon. I'm not saying it's better, just saying that's what it is. There you all go. There you all have it.